Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, welcome to Ask a Reporter, um, or as we like to call it, Arr. 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 Yeah, you get it. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I am Jack, and we're, I've got a new face sitting next to me. Face. You've probably seen them on BTN uh, this, one, this week. Yep. Yep, made your debut. Yes, I yep. did. Uh, it's Naiba. Hi, everyone. It's good to be here, part of VTN, very exciting. Yes, be, be kind to Liber um, to first ask a reporter. That's probably more of a note to myself than to you, because I will be the one <laughs> asking questions. Um, but what am I going to be asking questions about? You're going to be asking questions about this new breakthrough where they discovered the recipe to mummification. Ooh, mummification. Yes. A recipe. So it, does that mean we can follow the recipe at home and we can... <laughs> do our own mummifications? I don't like the sound of that. I wouldn't <laughs> recommend doing that. Okay. And you kind of need some special tools and stuff. Okay. And it's probably not hygienic to do it at mm, home. Probably not. So is yeah. like the first step is don't do this at home. Do not. Yes. Can we just have a little <laughs> okay. disclaimer? That do not try this at <laughs> do home. Do not mummify at home. <laughs> um, and so because we, we've talked about mummies on BTN since the existence of mummies, or at least ex since the existence of BTN, because yes. we're constantly discovering new things. But why was this discovery so important okay, or significant? It, it was important because for ages, they were kind of just like, okay, we know what they might have used in mummification, mm. but they weren't really sure because mm. we had the names yeah. of the ingredients in ancient Egyptian, but we didn't know what the heck those ingredients actually were. So now it's very cool because they found some jars. Is it a bit like um, we don't know the recipe for the 11 herbs and spices of a certain brand of chicken <laughs> shop? Yes. It's like we don't know, we don't, we'll never know what they are for another hundred years. Yeah, like imagine they had like code names for each of those oh. and those code names were publicly aired, but we didn't know what on earth those ingredients actually were. Okay. So, but then we found like a bunch of like jars that had little bits of those herbs with like the label of the code names. And we we're like, okay, let's find out what they are. And so that's what scientists did with these ancient Egyptian jars. That's cool. And is it, this is one of the jars that uh, they found, is that correct? This is not one of the jars that they found. <laughs> um, ah, okay. These this, look like peppercorns. I think they're an just assortment. a bunch of different lentils. Oh, all lentils. Yeah, I don't think those are peppercorns. <laughs> oh, actually these might be. Yeah. That yeah. Ah, oh, the top ones, and then they're black beans under that. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah, that's This is just not a prop, everyone. Th this is just for <laughs> symbolic purposes. Um, that's really cool. All right. Yeah. Great. Well, and um, should we mention as well, um, because usually on BTN, we become experts for that one week where we really focus in on the subject, for example, mummies, and we spend the week learning about it. But you've actually studied ancient Egypt yes mummification at uni is yeah that correct? so like ancient Egypt in general at university <laughs> and so we did a bit on like you know how ancient Egyptians lived what they did the history of it all that's a pretty fun topic there you, go. If you get a chance to learn about it do so you're an expert so ask anything uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know somewhat about, about it. mummies um yeah that's all right we'll, we'll work it out um yeah. Should we ask a question? Yes, we start? go ahead. Um, That's your first question. Okay, oh, uh, let's go. And thanks for sending in questions for our first yeah. Ask a Reporter for the Year. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, oh, let's go with something quite simple and something I don't actually know. And it comes from Tyler, who is homeschooled. Uh, why do they call it mummification? Interesting. Okay, mm. so mummification comes from mummies, which comes from the old Persian word moom which meant ah. like wax, because when a body is mummified or like embalmed, it looks like it's made of wax when it's huh. preserved. So um, it becomes mumia, which is like this, uh, the word for a body that's been preserved. And then that became mummy in English. M what was the word? Mum mumia. Mumia. So moom and then mumia. Mumia. Mum. And then mummy. Huh. There you go. Yeah. I just assumed that only mothers could perform the mummification. Uh, but that's way off. Yeah, no, that is way off. <laughs> the little bird that we always talk to is rolling their eyes. Heavily. Maybe someone just found it and they're like, this looks like my mother. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's what they were like, Mommy. It's mummification. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. There you go. Words. 
Um, and that was a Persian word as well. Yes, cool. and it shifted through a bunch of different languages, but originally it was a Persian word. Yes, yeah. which um, is usually the case for a lot of um, words that we end up using today for things that kind of have come from a different word and changed over time. Yeah. Uh, let's go to um, Holly from E-U-K-A, Yuka. Uh, how do they keep the bandage on? Or okay. the bandages? Yeah, so... The, are these... Uh, this is yeah. This is pretty similar to what they would have used, to be honest. Like and because they, they don't, they didn't don't have those like clips we have today that they put them around and then. No, know, and even with those clips, you know. sometimes the bandage just kind of moves off, and you're like, yes. great, now my wound is exposed. And you know, if we want to last for thousands of years, we can't be doing that. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> the mummies don't really move. Because they're dead. Ah, uh, so they? <laughs> no. What about in Scooby Doo when the mummies are chasing? Them? Except for in Scooby Doo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah that's when that mummy was probably struggling with a lot of bandages falling off. Yes, but how would they keep them on then? Or okay. they don't, or do they just? I mean, there was some like they would use like you know the stuff that they found in jars. They would put that on the bandages too, and like kind of slather okay. it on the skin and that would help it stick probably as well okay. um but the main thing would probably be the fact that the dead bodies didn't move so <laughs> good to know um do we know what specific thing from one of the, one of the ingredients do we know what ingredient they would have used or we're just assuming it would have been one of them it would have been one of them i think there was a. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they did use like some animal fats and other things. So that probably would have been part of what coated the skin and helped okay. the bandages stay. And like resin as well. That's something that really helps like, and beeswax. So mm. I'm sure all of that was probably used on the skin as well. There you go. Um, and this sort of ties in, um, especially with the whole thing about mummies and say Scooby-Doo that do run around. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, David, from, also from Yuka, Future Learning. Um, mm. Quite a few questions have come through from um, Yuka. I'm going to say Yuka. I'm going to assume that's right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, are the parts of the body still alive? Okay, so, um, <laughs> no. That no. was just a little silly thing in our skit and in oh. Scooby-Doo. Um, generally, they would mummify bodies that were already dead. Yes. Yeah. You don't want to mummify something that's alive. That would be very mean. Yes, like... Um, yes, Michelle didn't get mummified. Michelle no. ran away. <laughs> Michelle, can you prove you're alive? <laughs> Michelle is here. Can probably, you prove probably, you're alive? probably still has some herbs in, in her, her hair. In her hair, yeah. I oh. would say. Oh, yes. <laughs> Michelle, Are hi. You okay? Can you just I prove that you're okay and alive? She's gonna pop in as proof. I promise, I'm still, I'm still here. <laughs> Michelle, hello. Oh, I got to shuffle oh. in there. <laughs> there hello. Go. Yes. Um. Herbs did come out. Herbs yeah. came out? But okay. after, like, a good couple of washes, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> um, I found some in my ears, actually. That's oh, where no. most of... Oh, did I do... I, I think that was a the, mummy. The temple is collapsing. Oh, no. I think... Oh, ah! Sorry. Ah! I won't try and fix it. The curse um, of the mummy. I'm going to... That's not real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, um, of course not. Yeah. There we go. So came it was kind of like the set, the when set. you go to the beach... And then yeah, you and you get sand. heaps of sand. Yeah. It was because it was very fine. I don't even know what herb it was. I think it was probably oregano. Or like dried like mint or parsley Maybe. or something. Yeah. And it really go. gets in An Italian mix. An Italian mix. Maybe. <laughs> and it gets A stuck in mix. curly hair. It doesn't it's not something you can just Brush get it out easily. Yeah. Um wow. she found some in your ears though. That's, yeah, that's that would have been good to preserve. The joys of being a BTN reporter. It's yeah. what you do for the it's job. What you do. Exactly. What you do. Yeah. Just to entertain and educate you all. But Matt, oh, I'm all good. All good. Now. Okay. She's good. alive. Thank you. We yes. didn't actually mummify her. You yeah. don't mummify live things. No. no. Don't do that. No. No. <laughs> there you go. Um, can I ask, and was this the reason why perhaps Michelle wasn't mummified? <laughs> Because Ella, Ella from uh, Stradbroke Primary wants to know: Do you have to be wealthy to become a mummy? Okay. Oh. No, and no, no, oh, I'm, I am. Not, I don't know no. if you are wealthy or not. Oh. Jack, I can confirm. I do know we <laughs> make millions of dollars on BTS. Yeah, we millions we and make millions. So much. Um, no, I, I, I don't think you weren't equivalent to my wealth compares to ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt. Egypt. The pharaohs of ancient wealth, Egypt. I have yeah. to say, yes. yes. Um, Fair enough. But was that a thing? Did you have to be wealthy? Um, generally, yeah. You had to be pretty wealthy because mummification was a really expensive process. Um, if you were poor, 
you would get the budget version of mummification, which is they would just uh, bury you in hot sand. Uh, oh. Yeah. That doesn't sound like it would preserve much, actually. Uh, and then all the sand would get in your hair. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. Oh, Michelle would love nightmare. that. So that's that the be... type of modification you would actually get in real life, yeah. Michelle. Mm. Right. <laughs> there you go. But also lots of... Um, <laughs> Do you want to go and think about that? Yeah, maybe I'll okay. go reflect on that. <laughs> Make some money so you can have the proper mummification. Yes, yes, but maybe time to get a new job, perhaps. Oh. <laughs> no, I'd keep your job. Keep Thanks, your job. Thank right. you. Thanks see for you later, everybody. Your life, and we haven't actually killed you. No we'll worries. see you next time we need a mummy. <laughs> yes. Um, Great, there you go. Okay, so you don't have to be wealthy. I do know for no, a fact... Can, yeah. Oh, you do have to be wealthy. Um, for the I, proper full process, yeah. You could either be wealthy or you could be a pet of a wealthy person, because they quite often got mummified, didn't they? They did mummify animals. Yes. So, because they wanted to take all their stuff that they loved with them into the afterlife, so they're like, whatever you get buried with is what you take. So I guess if you really liked certain animals, get them mummified with you. I, and yeah, I would also be interested, I'm just seeing if there's a question that asks this, but like, what, why did they want to mummify everyone? Great well, question. not everyone, but the most people. Actually, they wanted to mummify everyone, which is why the budget sand edition existed. Okay, there you go. Um, because ancient Egyptians believed that your body is essential for you to go into the afterlife. So they needed your body to stay, like, not disintegrate into pieces. Like, mm. it needed to still be you because it's part of your identity. And then if your body is still in one piece, then your soul could go into the afterlife and do the whole process of what happens yeah. in the afterlife, which I believe someone, it might come up. Let's might see. come up. I'll have yeah. a look. Um, but yeah, they, they loved life. They, they loved really did. Life. Yeah, they didn't like the concept of dying, I guess. No. Or like, they were very fine with it because they believed that after dying, you don't really, it's not the end of something. You continue living in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to shout out to Simon from Roseville Public School who asks, did ordinary people get mummified? Which we've answered, yes. Yeah. They did. With they sand. got the hot sand treatment, which I feel like is like some sort of spa treatment somewhere that people pay a lot of money for. <laughs> That's true. The mummification <laughs> treatment should be like a really good branding thing. It, is, it would. <laughs> um, now, back to the ingredients. Dane from Yuka, another Yuka shout out, mm. um, wants to know what um, what's the list of ingredients? Can you name them? Off by heart? Oh, let me just pull out the recipe. Oregano, rosemary, thyme. Oh, no, that was just what went in Michelle's hair. Yes. Okay. Oh, you've got it. Oh, no. Yeah, no, unfortunately, <laughs> I I don't. Um, they're still trying to figure out the full list of ingredients. They okay. only tested some of the pots. Uh, but they did find some stuff like animal fat, resin, plant oils, um, some tar, some oh. asphalt. So, oh. yeah, it was a mix of different things, but they're still trying to figure out the full recipe. But we've, like, solidified some of the ingredients. Like, oh, my God, this is what they used. Um, but there's not all of them yet. Um, and so Denver, and talking about how... So they've got these pots that have got the remnants of the ingredients in it. Yes. Um, Denver wants to know how can they read the pot? So how can they test... How do they know that that was in them? Oh, OK. Yeah. So what they would do is... Got an Here's example. a pot. Type. This is not actually an artifact. This is just a random pot that we found around the BTN studio. But okay, so <laughs> could have uh, been from ancient Egypt. Who knows? Oh, the ABC's been here ninety years, ninety-one years. Yeah, that's about as old as ancient Egypt. I'm joking. No, that's not. not. <laughs> uh, so essentially, what they would do is they found like little remnants, um, and they take it and then they'd put it through some different scientific tests. And that would help them figure out what those remnants could have been. Um, and then they also had labels um, in ancient Egyptian, hmm. which how could they read that? They actually decoded um, ancient Egyptian language using... The main thing was the Rosetta Stone. So the Rosetta Stone was this piece of rock that they found, and it had this document written on it in different languages, so in Egyptian and in Greek, so that lots of people could understand it. Oh. which was pretty cool. And so, because historians already knew how to read ancient Greek, they were like, oh, it's the same thing in ancient, Egypt, uh, ancient Egyptian, so let's just translate it and compare the two, and then they figured out how to read ancient Egyptian. So that's how they can read the pots, and then scientific testing is how they find out what's inside it. Wow. What, what was the stone called? The Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone. Because it was found um, in Rosetta. 
Oh, I was going to say, where was it found? Uh, yes, Rosetta. Where's Rosetta? <laughs> I actually can't remember. <laughs> Maybe our friendly It's just north of Adelaide. Uh, yeah, it would be somewhere north of Adelaide. <laughs> <Probably>. that's, <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Wow. Well, I feel like we should do a story on the Rosetta Stone. That would, would be Would you guys be interested cool in learning story. more about that? Because that's I had no idea. Yeah. I just assumed because it's hieroglyphics, hierog- hieroglyphics, yes. hieroglyphics, that they just were like, oh, I, I, because they're like a picture of an eye. Um, that's English, though. <laughs> like, it's not oh, how yeah. it would, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but do they, like, because they are sort of like pictures, yeah. do they kind of match up with what their... Their equivalent words yes. were? Um, I haven't studied hieroglyphs in depth, so I actually don't <sighs> know. Well, can you go and do that so I you can answer that. my question? That's true. Okay. Um, Thank you. Come back to me in 10 years. And, all right. Yeah. We'll meet back here 10 years' time. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and do this all again. I think I found the question that you were referring to, and it comes from um, Dane Bank is the, the, the school. The person, and this is a quite an interesting one, uh, it comes from Alice, but you can also call me Raven or Lily, Amelia got confused with this last year. I don't know if she remembers. I don't know if she remembers, but I'm confused now, Alice Raven <laughs> or Lily, whoever you might be. Um, but anyway. We'll call her Alice. Uh, <laughs> I don't yeah. um, Alice Raven Lily asks, Hi, BTN. I would like to know what happens to the mummies in the afterlife and why do the priests have to pull the mummy's brains out through their nose? So we've sort of talked about why the fact that they're getting mummified to then go into the afterlife um, and that they need all those organs and pets and belongings with them in order to live a good life in the afterlife. Yeah. Um, what, 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 does anything happen to them? We don't really know what happens. Uh, I mean, what, I can no tell you what com- they believe. Okay, yes. Oh, yeah, but- do that. I, I don't, yeah. Um, but what ancient Egyptians believed is that um, your soul would go be t- like guided by the god of death, Anubis, mm. who had like a dog head, who mm. is actually who I was dressed up as um, oh. in the thing. Here it is. There you go. Very cool costume. That is a very theme. cool costume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so Anubis would guide the dead soul to the place where he was going to be judged and... Uh, another god of theirs would take the heart and put it on a scale. That's right. And then they'd weigh it against a feather and they'd see which one is heavier. Um, And if your heart was, I believe, let me check. Yeah, so if your heart was heavier, then you would essentially die permanently. Your heart would get thrown, eaten, and you would cease to exist. But if your heart was lighter, that meant you were a good person and then you'd go to the field of reeds, Hmm. which was like a better version of this world so all of your like loved ones your pets your stuff your your house would be there your organs both like (laughs) internal but then also the instrument and organ because maybe if you had an an organ organ. yeah so wait your heart has to be lighter than a feather yes but it's not like the physical realm so like oh okay yeah it's it's like (laughs) like, i don't like those odds yeah (laughs) (laughs) i've never weighed my heart but I don't think it's lighter than a feather. Uh, I would be is. very concerned if it was. Yes. You probably should see a doctor about that. Okay, if... that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, and c- can we answer the second part? The nose. Um, yes, so they pulled, we, famously, they pulled the brains out through the nose. Yeah, so the nose, because they had to take out most of the internal organs to stop the body from rotting, um, and the brain was one of them. So the easiest place to access the brain is through the nose, which is why... Even today, some brain surgeries are done through the nose as well. Because if you you have a little bone in your nose, and mm. if you just break that little bone, then you can just you can access your brain. Hmm, that's an image I did not need, but mm. got it anyway. Um, yeah. There you go. Quite a lot of fascinating stuff. Um, let's go to another question. You said pharaohs get to be mummies. Do the queens become mummified too? And that's from um, Layla. I'm um, also homeschooled. Oh, very cool. Well, hi, Layla. So but it's not just the the kings or the pharaohs? Yeah, so it would be most of the family and relatives as well. Yes. That would get mummified. Um, yeah, because if, if you were wealthy, you could probably afford to get yourself and your wealthy family and relatives mummified. And also, fun fact, there were like at least a couple female pharaohs as well. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is there, is pharaoh non-gender specific? Uh, 
Or was there a... Um, there were, like, a, exceptions. There were exceptions. Yeah, generally pharaohs were male, but there were exceptions where you did have some girls who were pharaohs as well. Um, and they would be called pharaohs. Yes, but there's yeah. very few of them. Most of the the female rulers would just be considered queens. Uh, yeah. With a K, like queen, or, or a Q, the regular queen? I don't think they use the English alphabet, so oh, we we'll be able to answer We've that. Been there. <laughs> um, and speaking of, we found out the Rosetta Stone was found near the town of Rashid in the Nile Delta in 1799. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. That was ago. a long time ago. 200 years. There you go. I'm I'm pushing for a story on that stone so I can learn more about it. It would be a very cool it piece. It would be a very cool piece. Um, did this Tala and Phelan, also homeschooled, want to know, did you, did you, <laughs> I don't know if they mean specifically you. We'll go with the royal you. Okay. I'll, and in fact, I'll say, did they remove the eyes and put spices in place of the <laughs> eyes? Yep. So were the eyes removed? The eyes weren't removed. Well, they weren't. Uh, most of the time. So most of the okay. time they would just like put a bit of linen on top of the eyes and then like sometimes they'd paint on something or there have been like some instances where they like remove the eyes and put in onions instead because they were like that kind of looks like eyes right <laughs> um, they didn't see that coming oh no. no and then sometimes they replace it with like stones and sometimes they just huh. close the eyelids yeah and just hope no one sees the rotting eyeball inside well i think the the idea is that you, no one was ever meant to see this is no. that correct they're not it's um it's we, a very they're private... meant to just stay there forever but we um well, not we, but other people went and <laughs> discovered them all. Yep, and were like, hey, this is cool, let's take it out. That's cool, yeah. A lot of that happened during the Middle Ages as well, I believe. Yeah, there were Which, different time periods, yeah. even in ancient Egypt as well. Like, those times there were, like, tomb robbers as well um, that would raid mm. the tombs, and, like, they actually had to move some mummies during ancient Egypt because they were like, this is getting raided too much. Um, but, yeah, throughout history, people have... Because it's full of treasure, right? People want gold. They're like, oh, my God. I am a poor person. I want money. Let me go and get money from here. So yeah, it's it's an interesting historical thing that's happened a lot. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. just Lara Croft raiding those tombs. <sighs> no, it wasn't just Lara Croft. It was many other people before Lara. Yeah, I think <laughs> many other people might have had more justification for raiding it compared to Lara Croft, who was <laughs> just like, I want to find stuff and take it. <laughs> I'm sure there was more plot. Um, <laughs> going a bit away from mummies, um, um, from uh, a school in New South Wales, um, Deepthi? Deepthi. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but uh, they want to know how long have the pyramids been around for, which would Ooh. quite often house the mummies. Yes, they would. The pyramids were generally the really massive structures yes. that were made to put the mummies inside like the mummies would be tiny and the pyramids would be huge but because yes. they were like kings so people like you know people better know that a king is buried here yeah um, and what better way to show that than with a giant pyramid exactly a triangle made of stone yeah for sure yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. the triangles the symbol of death um how long ago hmm let me just remember off the top of my head <laughs> have we confirmed that aliens made the pyramids we know that now, don't yeah, we? Yeah, 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 definitely. That didn't. Um, so pyramids, yes, okay, so pyramids, some of them were built over 4,000 years ago. So they've been here for a very, very, very long time. Some are a bit newer than that, but the first ones were like well over 4,000 years ago. Wow. It's pretty old. They're very old. Yes. And they're still standing. Yeah, some of them. Most of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um... Let's go. How old is it? Were you just, at, I guess, how old is what? I'm That's guessing from the... Adelaide from Colcan, Colcan Public School. Hi, how old is it? Um, the jars. Anything. I'm I, guessing the well, jars. Well, let's go, let's go all of them. What, how old are the jars? How, okay, so the old. jars would have been like around two and a half thousand years old because mm. they... Yeah, so everything that they found in that little workshop, the mummification workshop, was around like 2,500 years old. So, yeah. Wow. And so how, and then the pyramids are like 4,000, some of them? Some of them are over 4,000 years old, yeah. Wow. 
Because ancient Egypt lasted a very, very long time. Huh. Yeah. There you go. Um, let's go to Samantha, who is also from Yucca Future Learning. Um, how long have the Egyptians done the mummification process for? If they've been around for so long. Yeah. Oh, also, love you guys and your BTN episodes. Keep up the work. No. Not the good work, just the work. Just the work. <laughs> the good and the bad. Yes. Um, so what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, it was how long have the Egyptians been doing the mummification process? Do yeah. we know, like, um, where, when they first became ancient Egyptians <laughs> were they just doing it or is there like a time period where we can go between this year and this year is how they were obsessed with mummification yeah so we do okay. have a time period where it became oh. pretty common yes um because I'm so great at remembering dates um the time right. period was around we've taught you well to have a cheat sheet yeah by. <laughs> I what do you mean I'm just pulling this <laughs> I have no paper in my hands at all um yeah so okay so it became pretty common around Two and a two thousand six hundred BCE. Okay. Um, and they practiced mummification for like at least two thousand years. Mm. So it was a very common practice for a very very long time 2, in ancient Egypt. Two thousand years. Yeah. So they don't do it anymore. Ancient Egyptians don't. That's not really a civilization anymore. No. But yeah. Two thousand years. Yeah. They really liked their mummies. They really did. <laughs> I bet your Mother's Day went off. Yeah. <laughs> They probably called it Mummy's Day. Mummy's Day. <laughs> Do we... Well, uh, so someone asked why are mummies called mummies, and we've kind of answered that with um, why it's called mummification. There's yes. no other reason, is there? Yeah, no, that's it. Mummies is just a short version? So mummification is the process yes. of making a mummy. So yes. a mummy is the actual, like, dead body that was, like, embalmed. Yes. And preserved. And mummification is like what we call actually doing the whole thing to preserve the body. There you go. So that was for Joseph at um, Marist Catholic College, North Shore. Um, well, how do you how do you feel? Yeah. How do I feel? Uh, I feel great. How do you feel, Jack? I feel great. Sorry, I should have put more context because we're, we're pretty much at the end. Yeah. Oh, no Did way. that go quicker than you'd expect? So much quicker. Oh, good. Wow. But yeah. those were great questions. I they really were, enjoyed them. They were really great questions. Thank yeah. you for sending them through. And apologies, um, we weren't here last week um, on Ask a Reporter. We were very busy because I don't know if you have all noticed, but we've launched a new program. <gasps> What's the new program, Jack? Oh, well, thanks for asking. It is called BTN High. Because it's for high schoolers. No way. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we are kind of busy getting that all together. Well, I wasn't. I didn't really. I don't know if you did either. But no. other people were very busy. Yes. Um, <laughs> so you can go check out that. Tell your older siblings. Where can they check um, that out? Oh, on the website. Yeah. Probably yep. the website that you're watching this on, unless you're watching it on YouTube. I think they're watching, but you yeah. could probably also check it out on there as well. Yeah, I believe it's being uploaded to YouTube too. So there you go. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's been really exciting. Um, we've also yeah, make sure you also check out Newsbreak, um, yes. BTN Daily, as the as the kids call it. I don't, yeah, know they, I don't know if they call yeah, it Yeah, I can't wait to get home after school and watch BTN, BTN Daily. Daily. Uh, but that's on every weeknight. It's going to be on there tonight. I just saw someone walk past in a suit with a briefcase. I'm guessing that's a costume maybe for, for the show today. Oh, we're getting sued. Know. Oh, we're getting sued. <laughs> Great. Um, and yeah, and then also make sure you check out next week's story. What um, are you, You're on the show next week, are you? Uh, which uh, which BTN. one? We have so many. We have so many we shows. We have so many What things. have you been working on this week? Uh, what have I been working on this week? Yes. That's a great question. So I've been working on a very exciting story about space food and Ooh. stuff they've been developing so that astronauts can eat there in you space. Go. Watch this space for a story on space food. <laughs> uh, oh, great. Uh, Stellar pun. <laughs> Thank you. That's well, we have time for. yes, that, that's, we're done with the puns. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. You survived. Arr. Yes, I survived. Arr. Hopefully I didn't scare you off. No, I'm never coming back to this office again. Ah, okay. Well, well we've tried. Uh, cool. No, I'm kidding. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> have an awesome weekend, everyone. See you guys. Thanks, Thanks for, for tuning watching. in. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.